Hey guys, welcome to my channel, Emerging World Order 2025. Uh, I had to re I have to re-record this thing because I just found out that for some reason uh sound wasn't working. And I have no idea how that happens and how I have no idea. It's just a web-based thing, so something happens behind the scenes and you know, vendors and providers, they make changes and it just happens, unfortunately. So, uh, so let's get started. I'm not going to take much of your time. And so some interesting things are there in this video, actually. And I just wanted to share those with you. And... Those interesting things can actually shock you because, you know, how up until now we've been talking about uh, BRICS, world order, de-dollarization, all these things we have been talking about, right? So uh, in this video, we are going to talk about something even more interesting hmm? but before that there are a couple of uh, uh, fake news that I have to address hmm? and before I get started I am going to share my slide with you guys so that you can see all right so stay till the end okay this is gonna be very interesting video because some of the things that I'm going to tell you about bricks and all that, you'll be shocked actually. It's going to shock you. So, and then we will discuss why and what of it. Okay. So, bricks news. I don't know why I call it bricks news. Well, no, actually, I do know. Uh, I call it bricks news because I couldn't come up with a better name. Okay. And if I tell you exactly what the title is, then. Is gonna ruin the surprise, right? So, all right. So first thing first, let's get rid of all this fake news out of our way, and then we'll move forward. Okay. First thing is that there's a fake news that is that's floating around the internet that India blocks Turkey's BRICS bid. That's a fake news. Okay. What's the real news? I'm gonna show you right now. So let's go and look at it. So if you can see this uh, website here, right? So <clears throat> one second, I'm trying to adjust a few things. So this is the website. Okay? This is a Turkish website, by the way. Turkey, tur Turkey Today. Okay, this is the website. And I am not making any of this up here. Okay. So there have been websites, there are lots and lots of websites on the internet right now that are spreading this fake news out of some confusion, some sort of uh, misinterpretation of something somebody said somewhere. And so they are just publishing that India blocked Turkey's bid, India blocked Turkey's bid, and India blocked Turkey's bid. So I just wanted to make sure that this is very clear to you guys, okay? So here's the thing. Turkey's analysts refused German Bill's report of India rejecting Turkey's BRICS membership. All right. Now, what's the news? Turkey's, Turkish, Turkish foreign policy expert Sinan Elgin refuted claims made by the German news outlet Bild on Wednesday, which quoted him as saying that India had rejected Turkey's BRICS membership Bild. Bid. So this is Turkey. That that is actually foreign policy expert. He's rejecting German news outlets claim that India rejected it. Okay, they are saying that they are refuting it. It's not me saying anything. Okay, and Ogin clarified that the report misrepresented his statements regarding Turkey's diplomatic stand. Now the guy actually who said a lot of things. This is Ogin. So. <clears throat> That um, report mis misrepresented his statements 
regarding Turkish diplomatic stand. I had given an interview to Bill. Okay, so what he did is that he, Sinan Algan, he actually gave interview to Bill. And in Bill, he said lots of things, like, but the article left out many of the nuances. Given the interview to build on matter on the matter bricks, but the article left out many of the nuances on the matter. Algun said that okay. Now, and Algun is the one who gave the interview to build. Now, build a report denied by Turkish presidency. This is not me. Turkish presidency has simply denied this thing. Okay. So, what Turkish presidency say? Turkish presidency announced that bricks did not have any expansion talks on its agenda during Kazan summit. The presidency noted that any report alleging that India blocked Turkey's membership is totally baseless. Now, this is a very good step taken by the Turkish presidency and they did it. And, sim and why I'm saying this is very important because this is the kind of thing actually it ruins the people to people uh, ties and it ruins the the people to people relationship. Okay, and then second thing is that it's just not true. Why? Because these type of things can actually ruin the relationship between the two countries, or make it worse if it's not very good. Hmm? So this is one thing I just thought to let you guys know as to what exactly was going on. Hmm? So Bill had quoted Elgin as saying that India rejected Turkey's bid to join BRICS due to Ankara's close relations with India. Now, <clears throat> Bill had quoted Aljun saying that India rejected Turkey's bid to join BRICS due to Ankara's close relations with India. In Bill's report, Algun was dubbed as, as a BRICS insider. Although Algun is simply a former Turkish diplomat working for a think tank. So, and then see, here's one thing that doesn't make any sense. That Bid had quoted Algun as saying that India rejected Turkey's bid to join BRICS due to Ankara's close relations with India. <laughs> I mean, just make that make sense, all right? Now... India is indeed distancing itself from Turkey, Algin said, but the issue of Turkey's membership was not voted on in the summit, so there was no case of an Indian veto. And it's that simple. This is what I've been saying, that uh, full membership is not going to happen. There is no expansion. And other thing is that at this point, BRICS has to first of all realign everything. The first thing first is that BRICS has to build a headquarter. That headquarter that they're working on uh, to build in Bangui, Central African Republic, the car. That's where that's the neutral ground for BRICS countries, and that's where the headquarter will be made. Now, until that happens, okay, until that happens, uh, expanding. Uh, and all that won't have a meaning. It's that simple. All right. And people will not take you seriously if you don't have a solid structure in place. Okay. And so, 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 so that's why they have stopped the expansion. Why? Because as it is between the five countries before they expanded to nine, right? Uh, <laughs> This whole thing, they were having problems with like uh, payment systems. They were having problem in trade. They were having problem, and see these are, these problems don't occur at the political level. You have to understand this, okay? So don't think that oh, so there was problem between Modi and uh, Putin, or there was problem between Xi and Putin. No, this is not the. This has nothing to do with political politics okay the problem is this problem is that when two countries do trade they do some sort of business they um, uh, interact or anything then everything follows a process right and the your your companies your traders for them things should be very smooth why because if you're payment process, trading uh, regulations, all these things are not at par where they're supposed to be, then they're going to have problems, okay? 
and especially if you are not uh into the swift system if you are not trading according to the swift why because pretty much every trader has this they are they, they find working with with the dollar or the swift system a lot easier than working as a you know national currency they're used to that so the traders push the their governments to go for the dollar trade rather than the national currency trade you have to understand these things so so this is a problem that uh that they face so that's why expansion is not gonna happen at least until these things are smoothened out and all the wrinkles that are there that are taken care of and for that reason bricks way was pay was created and this is why uh, the they are working on bricks clear as well and bricks clear and then they're working on the bricks securities investments too okay so this is one thing that i just wanted to share with you guys and let you know that this is whatever news you are hearing about it it's all false okay so don't don't waste your time into reading all that hmm? now let's move to the next thing and now the next thing is the saudi is not listed as brics's full member or an official partner country this is also fake news okay there is nothing uh it's not even clear at this point whether saudis are going to be in the brics or not all right but one thing is very clear that during the brics business council meeting i heard and I watched those that meeting live, in fact, and then I watched that meeting repeat uh, the recording of it. And in the very starting of that BRICS Business Council meeting, that BRICS in the during the BRICS summit 2024, President Putin he mentioned Saudi Arabia in the list of the countries that are part of BRICS. Okay, so when somebody is saying that oh, Saudi Arabia officially rejects this or officially rejects that, no, all that is fake news and uh, it's not even clear right now. Now, if Saudi Arabia is going to join or not, I have given my, my input on this thing many times before. Okay, and input is pretty simple, depends on who wins. Which so far it looks like President Trump will be back in the office. And if he's back in the office, all these are not going to join BRICS. It's that simple. Okay. I mean, they may join too. I mean, it's not like it's a, it's, it's not like President Trump was against BRICS or anything, or he was very when he, in, du, during his term, because during his term, India was India was still part of BRICS and uh, Russia was already there. And then there were other countries too, South Africa. Nobody did, but nobody, nobody said anything about you know uh, having any issues with a country in a particular block. Because blocks are made and broken all the time. So uh, the problem will be with the de-dollarization, if that was the case. Okay, problem will be with the de-dollarization, and uh, all that will be addressed if if. In fact, it's not a matter of if, like, when President Trump comes to the office, all right? Now, so that's also debunked, okay? And this is a confirmed news. You, If, when you, if you, for that, you will have to go watch the BRICS Business Council video. And it says in the very beginning of it, okay? And it, in fact, I have made videos about it, too. I have made video where this thing is addressed. So I'm just letting you guys know again, okay? Now, let's move to something more important the actual subject of this video all right and that is this what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna just hide myself so that you guys can watch this video okay so for an alternative to SWIFT, we're not setting up any alternative to anything. That said, your question is very important in the current climate. 
One of the key issues is the issue of payments and settlements. And that is why we are pursuing the track of using our national currencies, which is well known as for settlement structures. We are using a Russian system for exchanging financial messages, which has been developed by the Bank of Russia. Other BRICS nations have systems of their own, and we're going to use them, and we are already using some of them, and we're going to pursue this path further. All right, so you guys heard that? There will be, there is no alternative payment system. There's no replacement plan for, there's no swift replacement plan. It's not me saying it. President Putin said it, okay? Isn't that shocking? Let's hear it again, okay? This time I'm going to be here. For an alternative to SWIFT, we're not setting up any alternative to anything. That said, your question is very important in the current climate. One of the key issues is the issue of payments and settlements. And that is why we are pursuing the track of using our national currencies, which is well known as for settlement structures. We are using a Russian system for exchanging financial messages, which has been developed by the Bank of Russia. Other BRICS nations have systems of their own, and we're going to use them, and we are already using some of them, and we're going to pursue this path further. All right, guys. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So here's the thing. Couple of things. First thing first, when he says that oh, there's no alternative, there's that blah blah blah. First thing first. So why, uh, in the last summit, it was decided that yeah, let's work on a payment system. Number one thing. Second thing is why there is a BRICS Pay website explaining everything. Why there was the demo of BRICS Pay. Why BRICS has been talking about BRICS Clear and all that. And why there has been discussions on BRICS uh, security investments and all that. These are, I'm not saying any of that stuff. These are there on the official websites. They're there on official BRICS presentations in the BRICS conferences and all that. So, so what is this U-turn about then? That there's no alternative <laughs> to, to Swift all of a sudden. What's going on here? Isn't that shocking, huh? And you know what? <clears throat> That's what I'm going to talk about now. So stay with me, guys, all right? See, <clears throat> excuse me. This is morning, you know? So this is, once again, this is a thing called U.S. elections, okay? Now, during those U.S. elections, and in fact, prior to that, okay, prior to the U.S. elections, uh, just before, uh, actually during the campaigning, let's just say that, okay? <clears throat> there were certain talks that happened behind the closed doors. When you see your candidate is going to win, and right now the chances are the 91 to 92% chances that President Trump will be back in the office. Now, nobody's saying that, yeah, it's happening or what now, but... <clears throat> Certain deals are made behind the scenes, okay? Why? Because BRIC summit was before the election day. So it has to be, you know, certain things have to be done before that. And just as a precaution and as a preparatory measure, okay? So... <clears throat> certain things were done behind the scenes. For an alternative... Oh. Yeah, let's go back here. Uh, hmm. So, <clears throat> certain things were done behind the scenes. Hmm? Those talks were done. Their discussions were made as to what can we do, what not. And after those discussions uh, about the de-dollarization with the BRICS mem members, especially Russians, because Russia was hosting it, and the whole idea was that BRICS pay will be 
launched and this is a confirmed news i have talked about it with proof i am not this is not like i'm making this up okay so so these were those communications through back channel happen and it was decided that if russia or if russians will have will will be under the sanctions then this is going to happen so the question was that was the guarantee that sanctions russians will not be under the sanctions so a proposal was made that okay that president trump is going to take this risk and announce this during the election that that sanctions from on on russia will be lifted okay these things those type of things are not announced without prior consultation prior discussion especially when it comes to us and russian relationship i mean a political leader i'm yet to find a political leader who will go and announce this thing that they are going to lift the sanctions on russia and their if they do that their whole campaign will tank i'm not making this up okay their whole entire campaign will tank but here actually it went up all these things were done so clearly there was a communication there was talks that happened behind the scenes and then this thing was announced now if you think that i am making this up so this is right here see this is one of the things there are many news outlets and in fact i have watched the videos live videos of president trump's rallies where he announced those things okay so trump makes shocking promise after ex advisor charged in russia scheme hours after the justice department announced it is charging a former trump advisor over his work with the russian media donald trump made a shocking promise he will lift the us sanctions on russia all right so so what big whoop the do if russian sanctions are lifted so what's the big deal about it see number one thing is that when you put the countries of the size of russia okay uh like russia right now is fourth largest country by ppp this is the recent announcement by imf okay then and i have already talked about the dollar recycling right how dollar is recycled in the international market throughout the globe hmm? and every time we sanction a country what we are doing we are shrinking the amount of draw dollar that can be recycled per year or quarterly or by annually hmm? so <clears throat> so when you sanction russia and seize all the assets and all that not just sanction actually you are seizing the assets you are stealing their money whatever was in foreign ex foreign ex reserve that was sitting in the us banks and all that you just seized all that money and then what they're doing is they took all that money and gave it to ukraine and and the deep state the military industrial complex actually took all that money all right all these communications have happened behind the scenes already now we know why deep state doesn't want president trump in the office so <laughs> when this thing is this thing was announced so what's the repercussions of all this i like, let's say sanctions on russia are lifted then what so without much ado i'm going to should i even tell you the secret or should i drag this video a little longer no actually i'll tell you i'm just i'm just messing with you guys so here's the thing see when you lift the sanctions what happens Russia gets all the money back their stuff definitely this is about we are talking about almost 700 billion dollars okay 
because I remember that during the sanction around that time frame, Russians had almost 600 billion, 600 to 650 billion dollars in in the foreign next, and out of which I believe uh, three to four hundred billion was U.S. dollars. Okay, because uh, countries do not keep all, all the, uh, you know in all the currency i mean they don't have any single basket of currency that's all i'm saying trying to say so they're going to get their money so russians are going to get at least 400 billion dollars from in the, in the foreign x and then their oligarchs and all their assets were seized and all that right so they were going they all are going to get their money back it's going to happen they will ask for it why because nobody is going to let that money go hmm? so What Russians are going to do, and this is all the chess game right now, okay? Under the assumption that President Trump will be in the office, okay? So <clears throat> they're going to get their money back. As soon as Russians get their money back in dollar. So what's the guarantee that after four years, again, sanctions will not be applied on Russia? In some form, in some way, something, something, and sanctions will be applied. So, so what, Russians are fool that they're doing this? Or, like, they're not going with the, they're not going with BRICS pay? Putin just announced it. No. Actually, there's a bigger move here. See, by announcing that they're not using BRICS pay, Russians are simply... Uh, diverting all that, deflecting all the anger and hate and any kind of heat that's coming the Russian way. Right now, what's happening is that Western media is simply projecting that Russia and China are causing the de-dollarization. Okay? So, so if they go with BRICS pay and all that, then most of the heat is going to be on Russia and China. And President Trump, who's, who, who was saying that, who's saying that they will lift sanctions on Russia, then this may not even happen. And clearly, this is not going to, I mean, uh, since the back channel talks have already happened, okay? And so Russian uh, sanctions will be lifted. But where am I going with this? Yes, they will get the money, they'll get all their assets and all. So now let's talk about what's going to happen. Why Russians said that, okay, let's not go with BRICS pay for now. Let's postpone this thing. It's not said that they're not going to do it 100%. They are just simply saying that we're not working on it. No, you have already worked on it, so don't bullshit, okay? <laughs> you already worked on it. See, what's happening is this. That they're going to get their asset back, they're gonna get dollar back. What the Russians are going to do is Russians are going to use the currency swap and swap the dollar that they're going to get with some other currency and use the dollar, whatever remaining dollar is, to pay off all the trading blocks and money and everything else so that uh, their trade pipeline is all clear. That all that's one thing. Okay. Now, second and most important thing that for which I am actually making this video is that if you guys remember, I talked about the Arctic. And as soon as I and I have always said that as soon as the Russia Ukraine war is over, which President Trump, when President Trump comes to power, it will be over. That's a guarantee, too. Okay. And this is why all these are interrelated. So, in the Arctic, for past few years, Russians, when, when the Western companies, due to sanctions, they left all that there. Then other countries like Russia, China, I mean, other countries, India, China, Japan, and there are a few other countries, they jumped in to invest in there. But they're facing a critical problem. The critical problem is that investing in national currency actually requires lots of maneuvers. What kind of maneuvers it requires? Maneuvers like, let's say, if India invests in Russian ruble, then India should have enough Russian ruble to do something with it. 
And if let's say India has extra ruble sitting, then India can go invest it. And then somehow uh, in return of that, Russians will have to do something with the rupee and all too. So all this uh, cu currency exchange, they have to figure out what to do with the extra money. Let's say Russians will have to figure out what to do with the Indian rupee that is sitting in their banks. And India has to figure out what to do with the Russian ruble that's sitting in their bank. And that leads to problems. Okay? It slows down things. Why? Because they have to first figure out what to do with it. And how do we really uh, uh, move forward, right? So, but when you have a dollar, then the what happens when you have dollar? What happens when you, when you have dollar is that dollar's consumption is faster. So, because there are hundred other countries taking dollars, so what do you do? You just simply go and give it to somebody else, and you're done. So that flow is faster, and transactions are faster, and uh, things get done faster too. So all the investors are facing a major problem in investing in the Arctic right now. So because of which the Arctic development is a little bit slower. So what Russians are saying is that, hey, let's do this. Let's postpone this whole uh, BRICS pay thing and uh, let's go with it. And if sanctions are lifted, and which they will be, then if sanctions are lifted, then what's going to happen? then India, China, all these countries can go and focus on the architect. So during the four years of the presidency of President Trump, or in his term, what Russians and all these countries, they're going to do, BRICS countries, they're going to work really, really fast mm -hmm. in the architect before his presidency ends. All that will be done in dollar. And Russians are going to, it's highly likely, it's highly likely that Russians are not going to involve any Western partners in it, considering the way things have been in the past. So if Russians involve somebody, then, and for four years later, let's just say that they just decide to take off, then, then the Russians have a problem, right? So what Russians are going to do that, and the BRICS countries, they're saying that, hey, let's postpone this. Let's uh, go with the dollar and get in things invested there and get things done real quick. And when things are done real quick, then probably they will do something else. Like they will probably rename certain assets and their claims to some other country like India or something. So this way, if India claims it, then sanctions will be on Russia. Then India still can work on it. And the last part, the asset renaming and all that, I'm just simply saying, uh, from the business side of things, that if Indian companies participate in it and uh, uh, say those assets that are there, some of them are named after uh, they are under the ownership of Indian government, then regardless of sanctions are applied on Russia, they don't apply to Indian government, right? So, but but that's this the that that's secondary. The primary thing is that they want everything to get done faster over there, and they want to utilize these four years of President Trump to finish and wrap up that work for their 2030 agenda. Okay, so when President Trump takes office in 2025, then those things so four years 2029. They will wrap things up, 2030 agenda. Agenda is the well-being of BRICS countries and this and that. All in all, de-dollarize the whole joint, go with the digital currency, and dump the dollar. It's that simple. Now, the question is then, uh, so why still like... Why bring, Why simply, why not just at least announce it? See, like I said, Russians don't want to take the heat. Okay? So, and they don't want to actually lose this hope of sanction being lifted. 
that whatever hopes are there if such Russians move forward. And this is why I'm saying that there have there, there are the back channel talks that has to happen. Without that, this type of announcement is not made. All right. So Russians don't want to ruin their chances on that front. Okay. And next year, Brazil, Brazil is not going to announce BRICS pay either. So what's going on? See, what's going on is that Russians are saying that, okay, uh, we will, let's do this. Because President Trump is, his policies are totally anti-China policy. He wants to go after China. That's his goal. So China needs some sort of, uh, you know, stuff, something under the, the sleeves to make a point, to send a message that don't mess with us economically. And that message will be done when, when China will host the BRICS summit. Okay, so that's why they postponed this whole thing. That's the second reason. That postponed this. And when China and US is going to go after each other in the economic war, then during the BRICS summit in China, they're going to introduce all this. And when they introduce all this during that, China will be making a statement that, see, we launched a whole new payment system. Now we don't need it. Need your SWIFT. That will be the major blow. And it's also a possibility. Now, this, this is something you will see. It's going to happen. And I think Chinese are going to, China is going to uh, uh, host the BRICS summit probably in 2029 because I think 2025 and 2026, it's Brazil and uh, uh, who is hosting it uh, next? Uh, I think after that, it's uh, probably India, probably in 2026, 27. I don't know who is going to host, but. Yeah, but China is going to host in 2029 or 2028 around that. So it's going to get interesting. Okay. And uh, so that's the reason. Number one, the whole, uh, the Ukraine thing, Ukraine war, Russia-Ukraine war that's happening. So they want, once the Russia-Ukraine war is over, they want to go to Arctic, invest over there and finish all the war and get things moving over there. And uh, second thing is when the BRICS pay and all that will be inaugurated and introduced and countries will start to use it, that's going to happen. When China will host it, okay, all this, this is planned, to, thought through, okay, just to think about this. This is all thought through. China knows what's going to happen when President Trump is in the power. And Russia knows that too. And India knows it too. So, all in all, not de-dollarization has been slowed down already for four years, four more years. During that process, I think that I'm pretty sure the back channel talks, they don't happen just on one or two things. Other thing is that, okay, everybody, see, in the, in the new world order, every country wants to know where the, what their place will be, okay? And uh, every country wants to uh, get the time to prepare. Mm -hmm. And I have already showed you guys that uh, there is a whole set of countries that's working on digital currency and all that. All those things are being done for a reason. It's not because there is no reason. Mm -hmm. It's not because they just like whatever it is. Right? Nigeria just decided to sell their oil in their own Naira, their currency, right? So all that is happening not because the world doesn't want to de-dollarize. All that is happening because it's coming. Only thing is that now it's going to come four years later. But it will come. And during these four years, you will see that U.S. economy will probably start to transform into digital, digital economy, digital currency. Lots of things are going to change. That's the preparation for... 2030 or something. So yeah. And so lots of folks were, you know, you know, on the internet, they scare our 
uh, retirees and all the older older folks, elderly folks, you know, the, oh, your retirement is doomed. Like somebody was asking me, oh, I'm in US, what do I do? I was like, relax, man. <laughs> I mean, see, issues are there, yes, but uh, I would say that uh, good and bad happens in you have to be smart about it. If you don't have any money, then you don't have to worry about anything. But uh, if you have bad investments, then yes, only bad investments are gone during a bad economy. So think about that. So I think that I just wanted to share with you guys that this whole thing, this was a shock for me. But uh, but I think I know the reasoning. And and this is what's going to happen. So what exactly is going to happen? What's exactly going to happen? Okay. In coming months, is that Russia-Ukraine war will stop. Second thing you will see is that whole entire climate change, climate protection, uh, preservation, all the climate talk will happen. But that climate talk will be bullshit. Why? Because President Trump simply calls it a hoax. So this even makes it more uh, uh, important, the, these years will be more important for British countries to go and do their work in the Arctic. Okay. So, so you may see some serious shift in U.S. foreign policy towards the Arctic too. You may start to see that. You may start to see the manufacturing of uh, building of icebreakers and all. U.S. may start to build icebreakers and all. If you see these announcements, then you know where things are headed at least from the west side but uh, you will see down the line you will see that uh, uh, modi prime minister modi then president xi they are all going to vladivostok meeting the russian president and all that all those things are going to happen you will see these leaders talking to each other meeting with each other so this is coming in the in, in coming years you will see all that happening which means that the arctic everything is arctic after that and for China, China will start to work on improving the relationship with India as well because of the President Trump's China policy. So he would expect, Chinese will expect that, hey, at least let's work together, man. Come on, man. So the so Chinese will try to build a good relationship with India because of President Trump's policies and uh, <clears throat> because... China can enter Europe through Arctic, okay, northern uh, north, northern sea route, and there is polar silk route that they call it, all right? So they can enter Europe from there. So Chinese can do that. So once they start to do that, and it's shorter too, so it will be cost effective as well. And what's interesting is that they're all using the port of Paris over there. They're all entering France. Russians will go to the France and uh, to enter Europe, and then Chinese are going to use France to enter Europe. So something about France will happen too during the coming years too. And since Chinese are going to do all this, they will use Arctic and all. So for them, for Chinese, Indian Ocean will become will be of secondary importance as a backup plan. And since it will be a backup plan and secondary importance, then you will, of course, you will see less and less Chinese in China and India conflict or anything. And chances are that Chinese will simply pull out and they won't even, they don't even, after that, they won't even worry about it. Worry about, you know, engaging with India in negative things. Would expect India to become part of their BRI as well. So, you the 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 what's coming for next four years all right so anyways guys i hope you like the video and please do like and subscribe and my apologies uh my sound was gone i'm gonna test the sound this time again <laughs> all right so yeah thank you and take care i love you all and i'll see you in another video